Hello, and welcome back to the Security Metrics Podcast. My name is Jen Stone. I'm one of the principal security analysts here at Security Metrics. Very excited about this topic today because it's about a part of PCI that I'm not as familiar with. So this is going to be a learning opportunity for me as well as for you. It's going to be kind of all things ISO. We'll get into what that means in just a minute. First of all, I would like to introduce my guests to you. I have with me Robbie Watson, Director of Business Development at Security Metrics. Robbie is the Head of Channel Partnerships at Security Metrics, working with product owners, operations, IT, and risk teams to create custom security programs that improve overall admin and client-side user experience, reduce attrition, reduce risk, exposure, and contribute to increased revenues. Thank you for joining me today, Robbie. Thanks for having me, Jen. It makes you sound pretty fancy, huh? Do you like I'm that? I'm very fancy, yeah. Okay. yeah, yeah. You're, you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> our next guest is also from Security Metrics. Scott Robinson is our Director of Customer Success here at Security Metrics, and he's been with the company for 14 years. I tried to get you a bio, but Scott is a man of mystery. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to keep all that stuff silent and quiet. <laughs> Just copy paste my bio. <laughs> oh, oh, you guys do exactly the same thing? Uh, he makes everything run. Oh, okay. Yeah, I just make everything work the way you'd want it to work. Okay, in the ISO area? In in ISO, in the bank partnerships, anything that deals with a partnership and a PCI program, I'm there to make it happen. Oh, excellent. So I promised people just a minute ago that we would explain what an ISO is. Who wants to take a crack at that? Jen, do you want to take a crack at I would this? like to take a crack at this. <laughs> and and ISO <laughs> is, I think, tell me if I'm wrong. Is it an independent sales organization? <gasps> you yes. got it. Yes. I got one right. I'm so relieved. <laughs> All yeah. right. But what does that mean? So it's just a payment processor, right? So an ISO is above an acquirer. So you have the acquiring bank and then you have the registered ISO. So think of them as like, if you're, if you're thinking real estate, mm -hmm. the acquirer would be the broker's office. Okay. And then the ISO would be like a realtor. And then down below that, you'd have your individual sales agents. So they just allow a merchant to be able to process payments and credit cards. Okay, so, but are all processors ISOs or is ISOs a specific type of processor? Uh, not all of them are, there's so many different ones. So there's the acquirer or there's a sponsored bank or there's a payment aggregator, aggregator or there's a payment facilitator or there's also registered ISOs. Okay. So there's lots of different flavors, but at the end of the day, they all kind of wrap up to allowing merchants to be able to accept and process payments. Okay. So, and trying to make it as frictionless as possible for them to do so. And there's lots of new um, kind of buzzwords and, and new terminology uh, above ISO, like payment facilitators, a new really popular one coming out. Um, but it's just the way that they're categorized and um, aligned, but end of the day, just merchants processing payments. Okay. What do you think, Scott? No, yeah, it's great. You did a great job. <laughs> Well, so I work with a lot of customers, but they tend to be level ones, level twos, the, the larger organizations with, with more volume. And it's very rare for them to mention uh, ISO. They typically will talk about their acquiring banks. Um, uh, what would, what's the value to a merchant to having an ISO? I hate to say that, but I don't know if there's any necessarily a value to having it. It's just how they got picked up and put into the process. Right? Okay. How they became, you know, I took my business and I needed somebody to process and I just happened to pick this guy here. And then my business grew to the point where I became a level one or a level two merchant. And okay. So it's just uh, luck of the yeah, draw. And, right? and I think ISOs are heavily sales focused. So um, like for an acquirer, the benefit to having an ISO is that you have tons of sales representatives going out and representing you so that the acquirer and, and ISO gets residual on the transactions or swipes okay. from that individual merchant. So perhaps the benefit to the merchant, I guess, would be if I'm an agent of an ISO, so a salesperson, right? And my representative is very, very hands-on, helps me with everything. I can call them. They fix it right away. I think that may be the benefit of an ISO is down to the agent level okay. of making sure that sales representative is really on the ball versus like a... Square, for example, or an mm -hmm. app where you just swipe it, and if you need support, you have to call whomever, go to their website, right? Oh, mm -hmm. so it's a more personal kind of experience? It's much then? more personal touch. Okay, so um, let's say a merchant wants to take credit cards. They have a lot of options, mm -hmm. right? Yes. So the ISO, what they try to do is go say, hey, use our service, go through us, because we'll give you this more personalized approach. We have, do they offer them different options for, for processing or? Most of the time, an ISO works with several different processors. 
And oh. so they have a, a, an option to choose depending on which processor has what this merchant needs, right? Okay. And so it gives them the ability to go. It, it's like walking into a, a car dealership that has Ford and Toyota. And all of a sudden that guy's going, well, what are you looking for? Right. And let me find you this vehicle based off of your need. And so, then they'll show them all the okay, different. Okay, so they kind of have an of expertise in understanding how different merchants might want to interact with their acquiring bank or or um, the payment brands in some way. That's it. And then they can say, of these flavors. Yeah. Yeah, it's custom. So like if I'm selling specific to like um, small mom and pop shops that uh -huh. just want a terminal to accept credit cards, right? Versus maybe a restaurant that maybe needs some more middleware solutions that can do ordering and tracking and all these other fancy things like built into the, the point of sale. Okay. So yeah, there's quite a bit of options. And I think again, it's heavily sales focused. Okay. Right. So we have these merchants and ISOs are working with them. Do, do ISOs automatically get them plugged into the PCI process? Is that part of what they offer or is that an add-on thing? That's a great one. Um, it, it could be sometimes the ISOs are running the program and all they simply have to do is report that merchant's compliance up to the processor. In some cases, the ISO has no say and it's whatever the processor is doing, they're doing it. And all I am doing is turning you over to them for that piece of it. Okay. Uh, more and more and more, we find that ISOs want to control that. They want to control how it happens and what's going on. They want to control the fees and the fines. They want to make sure that their merchant isn't, and, and as Robbie said, it's a sales thing. I want to protect my guy, mm -hmm. right? And so they're trying to do everything they can to protect that piece. Okay. And so, but it all depends. It all depends on who that processor is and who they turn that merchant over to and how much control they're able to gain. So some processors might say, hey, we have a PCI program for small businesses or you know, whatever size, and and whoever you sign up has to follow this thing. Yeah, it's mine or only mine. <laughs> yeah, right? so, yeah, that could happen often, right? So if we have an agreement with an acquirer or payment processor and that merchant wants to use someone else, mm -hmm. that payment processor may say, great, you can use whomever you want, but you're still gonna be billed for this security metric solution as well. Okay. <laughs> so at that point, the merchant's like, well, I don't wanna pay twice, yeah. right? <laughs> So ISOs that do decide to opt out of whatever their payment process, process solution is and go direct, mm -hmm. they have a lot more options to make things customized. Okay. So all of the communications, the packaging, the pricing, the basically the level of making it frictionless, I love that word uh -huh. <laughs> with, with this, um, goes completely up here because it's customized to that specific ISO versus okay. the agreement over here that that payment processor had signed with the, the vendor. All right, it sounds like there are a lot of decisions that merchants need to make. Like small businesses, I, I, I have a special place in my heart for small and medium businesses because it's so hard to navigate all of the regulations and standards and you know these, these things that, that you have to have in place to be a merchant. And it seems like PCI has a level of complexity to it that's even higher. Right. So, so when you're working with with um, small, medium businesses, is it? Do you think it's better for them to have an ISO to help with that? Not necessarily. I just think they're looking for that personal touch, and and when you look at the two, it's like Robbie said. Sometimes the big guys aren't as personal mm -hmm. as a sales office, and so I think it's a it's a toss up either way. Yeah, and most merchants. They just want to get back to their business, right? So yeah, that's I, what I they want. To, they want to run the business, not do a PCI program. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so I try to put myself in their shoes and I'm thinking that would be the last thing I'd want to do is yeah. anything related to compliance or security. Yeah. I want it to be done as fast as possible. Mm -hmm. So there's ISOs out there that have uh, certain payment applications or whatever it may be to streamline the user experience for the merchant mm -hmm. and maybe make a lot of those PCI requirements not applicable or be able to pre-populate them and those are the ones to go to for sure. Uh, and the reality is, is education on, on both sides of that, either the processor side or the ISO side makes all the difference in the world. You educate a merchant, they'll take your hand, they'll walk the path, mm -hmm. right? Unfortunately, we're not great at it, right? We yeah. see th they're, they think they are, oh, I've put it out on a newsletter and I've stuck it on my website and 
I mention it and I give them a fee to, to spur them to do something. Right. But they may not be educating enough. And that's where we come in because we try to educate the merchant as we go. Oh, okay. Our consultants are usually trying to explain what PCI is, give them an understanding, mm -hmm. point them to places to find more information if they need to, right? Okay. And the more we can educate the merchant, the less feedback, uh, negative feedback that you get from a merchant. Right. right. And so we try to do that with all, all of our tools between the sales and the support team on our side, our fast passes. It's all about education. Mm -hmm. And you can never educate enough right. when it comes to this one piece because merchants have their wares that they're trying to sell. And that's what they're trying to do. PCI is a stumbling block in the middle of all that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, it's definitely not easy. And uh, what I've seen it with every customer is that if they just take a little bit of time to, to seek out education, then everything flows better. But if you're like kind of fighting it all the way, I, I'm not the person to fight against <laughs> yeah. for PCI. Right. Sorry, I could tell you what you need to do, but I, I did not create this standard. Right. Um, I just help you live by it. Um, so, and, and on that topic, sometimes I'll get talk to actual ISOs who want to become PCI compliant. Which is an interesting slice because how do ISOs figure out what assessment they need as opposed to the merchants that they serve? Do you ever run into that, ISOs yeah. and PCI compliance? Yeah, so, so fairly often actually. So ISOs, depending on kind of where they're at, they come to us for guidance <laughs> and go out on their own on Google or wherever to kind of find the resources they right. need. But um, as a service provider, they do need to have an assessment and there's lots of different things alongside that assessment within the data security standards. There's the, you already know all this, but the internal network no, scanning, but the our, external but scanning. But our listeners would probably like <laughs> no, to hear yeah, all yeah, about the, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah the, the penetration testing and everything else to make yeah. sure that their backend for where their merchants are gonna be accepting credit cards is secure. Because a merchant cannot actually truthfully become compliant if that ISO is not compliant. Right, because they're a right. service provider. Yeah, right. It, right, a lot, right in that payment chain. And I think you said something very key at the beginning of that, which is they, are, they need to become assessed as a service provider. Mm -hmm. So a lot of, of groups that I talked to, and a couple of ISOs have been this, have thought that they weren't service providers. And so they weren't looking at how to assess properly. Um, but they, because they would say, well, I only do all of my stuff online. So that means of course I'm an SAQA, but everything's in the cloud. Everything's yeah. in the cloud. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> well, okay. Well, the cloud is another way to have a platform, but, um, but, but yes, if you're a service provider, you, you, you have to do a service provider, pr probably service provider rock right. uh, at that point, because, um, and, and maybe you look at it a different way, but I think. Um, there are some small service providers that can fill out an SAQD, mm -hmm. DSP. but I, but I don't think that an ISO can ever count themselves as that because when you're serving a lot of merchants who have volume, you can affect the security of a lot of other organizations. You kind of got to take it seriously and do the full report on compliance. Right. It never hurts to, to really cover it, right? To make yeah. sure you're secure. You don't want to have that backlash of, oh, I thought I was okay with this yeah. and I'm not. And I think even the DSP, and you can correct me if I'm wrong here, but um, they kind of have to get the okay to do the DSP, right? If they, if they, if their processor if says, the acquiring bank, says, the acquiring bank says you have yeah. to do an audit, you have to do an yeah. audit. If they say, no, you can do a DSP then and they have okay, to have approval by their, they have to get that approval. Yeah. yeah. And it can catch ISO in a hot spot too. If the merchant says, well, where's your attestation of compliance and your, yeah. your, your rock, right? Yeah. And if they don't have it, then it can be really difficult for them because mm -hmm. then the merchant can't truthfully get compliant. Right? right. As long as the merchant uh, really understands what they're supposed to be looking at. And a lot of them do. A lot of them get enough self-education that even the smallest of merchants know, I have to have a service provider attestation of compliance. Right. So, um, yeah. And so that, that gets awkward if, if they don't have that. Yeah. <laughs> we ran into that a few times for sure. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, uh, it, did they, did you get them plugged in and on their oh, way? Oh, they got plugged in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they got plugged in good. <laughs> This episode is brought to you by the Security Metrics 2022 Guide to PCI Compliance. I personally helped with this guide and can highly recommend it to anyone going through PCI Compliance. It goes through what the, re the requirements are and then tells you in the real world what they mean, how to meet them, 
recommendations from um, auditors. So uh, it's a great resource to get the fundamentals of PCI compliance. You can get it on our website, securitymetrics.com. So are there, do you find that some ISOs are more supportive of their customers' PCI than others? Do they, do they have programs that helps educate them or are they really relying on, uh, on you to help fill in the, the blanks on education? What's that, what does that as inter- interaction look like? That, it's one of those things that you see, every, this, this piece comes up all the time, you should discuss with them, right? Yeah. Most of the time, the, the idea of any program is, I wanna make this as simple as I can for my merchant to get them through the process as quickly as possible. Unfortunately, sometimes it becomes a checkbox exercise. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's truly about education. And we see the whole gamut. We've seen the ones that say, let's just checkbox this baby and get through it. And then we see the ones that go, hey, you know, education's really big. How can we educate? And can, you know, as security metrics, we we provide all kinds of podcasts and white papers and and pieces that we've done from our marketing team. And we tell them, hey, come use this. Mm -hmm. Educate your merchant. And then we look for ways to educate. Right? We have a As ton of free. Oh, oh yeah. I mean, have you so looked much. at the Security Metrics Academy recently? Tons. Right. Yeah. There, there's so full. much free information, and it really is focused on some of these merchant levels. Um, the things ca- that I was kind of wondering about that is sometimes I'll talk to an ISO that is really not well educated in PCI, and then it seems to make it harder on their merchants. Oh, definitely. Definitely. Matter of fact, we had one ISO that they'd signed up and they we sat down for the first implementation meeting. We're talking with them about, you know, how things rolled and what things. Oh, well, we know everything about PCI. And he said, great, great. When it comes down to the SAQs, is there, you know, how do you want to pre-fill? An, what's an SAQ? Oh, no. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> that is not what you just told us. <laughs> yeah. And so we've we've seen both. And, and, and typically my team, we're looking to be that education if we can be that education. Right. We're going to try to give them the best advice. Um, again, we're not the police. Mm-hmm. We're here to help guide you through right. the same process, right? Mm-hmm. And so we're we're willing to tell you how it should be done. Mm-hmm. You have flexibility to do it a, a bit in the way you want to do it, but we're always going to raise our hand and say, you may want to rethink this piece and this is why, mm-hmm. um, because we, we want you to get a good program going. We want everything to go smoothly. We don't want you to lose your merchants. We don't right. want you to have breaches all over the place so that all of a sudden sure. you're not trusted because that affects you. Mm-hmm. And as your partner, we want you to shine. Right. That's what we're trying to do. So um, one of the things that, I, that I've noticed about um, small merchants is that we, we kind of get one or the other. And you kind of mentioned both of them. We've got the checkbox ones who just want to get PCI behind them. They don't understand the security value uh, right. of going through the compliance program. And then there's others who who um, who look at it as, hey, we can really improve our security stance if we take this seriously. But the ones who are, are kind of checkboxing it, sometimes we'll get uh, self-assessment questionnaires that, like you said, they're just filled out and nobody carefully thought through things. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and I think that, uh, especially as we were just talking about with ISOs, um, making sure that they have a, a, a cell, uh, excuse me, an attestation of compliance that is clearly filled out and they've been assessed, at least going through the process. At they starting it, right? Right, right. They, yeah. they gain the knowledge to know, hey, this right. is a big deal. We can help our merchants a little bit better because we, we've been through it as well. Right. And unfortunately, because of the, the atmosphere that this is under, you'll get the sales rep who doesn't quite understand it. Yeah. And so to them, it's a real big hassle, right? This merchant's calling yeah. me complaining. Yeah. You've got to turn this thing off. And they're kind of trying to be the tail that wags the dog. Oh, no. And, and so you will see that in some cases. And it's always hard because they don't have a grasp of understanding. And that's mm-hmm. where we're willing to teach um, the entire banks and, and ISOs employees let's let's give you the education so that you can say oh yeah you have to do pci this is what it's for we're partnered with this person because they know it and they're there to help you right and then nobody gives the bad answer which we hear about every once in a while i think we just don't want to disrupt their current flow so Mm -hmm. pci is there but Mm -hmm. we wanted to make it in some way shape or form make it seem like it's not there so it's there but we make it so easy and simple that it's not there 
And there's other great vendors out there that probably do the same, but. So seamless to their business not processes. Not as good as us, though. No, yeah. <laughs> I don't know if we can say that on this. But. <laughs> yeah, just trying to introduce it so it's as easy as possible and not something that they have to flip their entire business upside down to do. Okay. So um, as you as you talk to ISOs um, and maybe some of their merchants, what are their top PCI concerns? What's uh, What do they come up with? For- there's... There's a lot of different groups within an organization. So um, you have finance. Mm-hmm. Their concern is typically revenue, right? right? <laughs> you have risk and compliance. Their um, concern is, hey, we want to get our merchants compliant. Mm-hmm. And then we have product. We want the best user experience possible. Mm-hmm. So all three of those can actually kind of clash because there's different goals, right? Right. So, for example, some ISOs charge uh, an abundant non-compliance fee. Mm-hmm. And um, they rely heavily on that revenue that's generated from non-compliance fee. Oh. So sometimes it's a, a battle for risk and compliance teams. And I'm doing my hand gestures. <laughs> <laughs> battle for risk and compliance teams because the more compliant a portfolio gets, the less non-compliance fee revenue that they get. So finance is wondering where that revenue is coming in. Hmm, that seems like a weird way to incentivize your company to not help people. <laughs> it, it's kind of an uphill battle. <laughs> it can then, get really messy. Yeah, yeah, quickly. that sounds it. Right, yeah. but you need some sort of a stick sometimes right? to get them moving. Mm-hmm. It's figuring out: can we carrot this thing, or do we have to stick it? Mm-hmm. You know, which of the two ways are we going to go? And and there's lots of creative people out there. They've come up with very creative ideas of, right. of trying to dangle the carrot rather than use the stick. And, but sometimes a stick is all that moves something, yeah. you know, and you just got to kind of use and it. I don't think there's one right answer, right? There's so many right. different options that people can do. Mm-hmm. But I think when, when we try to talk to people, it's just let's try to combine everyone's goal together and see how we can make it work, right? So product right. gets their frictionless experience. Finance gets the kind of pricing that they need and the revenues that they need. And risk and compliance gets the compliance numbers they need. So, I mean, it's obviously easier said than done. Right. But um, trying to hit everyone's goals is, I think, really important rather than just doing the one person you're talking to because then in the end, finance could get upset because you're hitting way too high. Yeah, so you're talking, to the, <laughs> you're talking to the sales guy, you're talking to the risk guy, and then suddenly the finance guy is saying, you didn't even think at all about what I needed in my yeah, I, group. With this customized approach to everything, it almost feels like, you know when you go to like Applebee's and their menu is so long, you don't even know where to start? I don't know what I want to eat because there's so many options. That's why they have the mixed drink platter, so you can have one of each. (laughs) Oh, is that what that's for? (laughs) (laughs) One of each beer that you want to. (laughs) So, But how, how do you help when people come to you and say, hey, I just don't know where to start? Uh, it, typically, they, they've got some idea, right? And so they'll come and, and, and as we have the conversation, and Robbie's already spoken with them. And, I say we can do everything. Here, Scott. Yeah, <laughs> figure out what you want. They, so th- he thoroughly confused them, and you take them no, and say... Robbie does a great job of understanding <laughs> their need at that point. So okay. by the time they hit me, there might be a few questions, but... But typically, we but understand what he's going pared on. down and given them a, right. a direction to go in, and, and then and sometimes it changes, for the most part. right? Yeah. Sometimes it'll change. They'll come in and they'll say, "Well, we really were thinking about doing this, but can we do this instead?" Okay, sure, we can do that, right? We're we're here right. to help you make this program be successful. We want you to shine. We want your company to shine. So and that's, that's like what we're trying to do. The customization for ISOs, right? Okay. Where they can right either go with what is generalized for everybody, mm-hmm. or kind of pick and choose literally everything, shake and bake it the way they want to, right? right. right. So. In my office, I've got a bunch of boards, a bunch of maps on on pegboard, and they're full of pins, right? I got mm-hmm. pins all over the place. And when people come in new, especially consultants, I always tell them, all of these pins represent a different company and a different PCI program, and not a one of them are the same. You know, make sure you're looking at the instructions in the red box to know how to handle that merchant and what to do and how to do it. So you're like the beautiful mind of the ISO world. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't tied strings yet, but kind of. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, this has actually helped me uh, understand a lot of what you do and what the ISO world is. Um, before we close, um, uh, PCI DSS 4.0 is coming up, and and probably everybody out there just cringed because we're all saying, oh man, uh, you know, something else changing. But there's not a lot changes for some people, but a lot changes for other people. And, and in terms of ISOs, what, are they, what do they need to care about? What do they need to be aware of today in order to prepare for that 4.0 kind of boogeyman? 
So I, I think it's probably a two part question. So the first right. part, um, you obviously want to make sure that you're partnered with a solution that is prepared to mm -hmm. administer Ford Auto, right? Right. So whomever that is, so long as they can get your merchants evaluated with the correct data security standards sure. for Ford Auto, that's sure. probably the, the biggest thing. Um, and then two is merchants oftentimes are going to go from their current PCI DSS standards and then drop to, to non-compliant because now they have to fill out the new Ford Auto. So finding a way to make that as easy as possible tra to transition off the, the data security standards today to the 4.0 standards mm -hmm. is going to be a, a pretty big deal. As far as the insides of 4.0, I'm going to give that to the man in mystery over here, Scott. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the hardest thing, probably the biggest change that we've got is, is the SAQA merchant, the merchant that is yes. e-commerce, totally outsourced. All this time, that was kind of the magic place to go, yeah. right? Oh, I'm SAQA, it's all outsourced, and all I have to do is this small SAQ, no scan. That's true. Love That's the gonna change, <laughs> right? It is going That's to change. gonna change, yeah. and, and we know that the scan is where the security is mm -hmm. for them. Yeah. And so for us, it's, it's yeah, it's gonna become harder for that merchant, but not really that much harder. Most scans run and pass without any problems. Um, you will have people that will call up and say, hey, well, how come I passed this scan three months ago? I didn't change anything, but I'm failing now. Because <laughs> the bad guys changed. Right. <laughs> and that's the key, right? Yeah. It's the, the bad guys, they're, they're, they figured out how to get in there. Mm -hmm. And that database can change like that, and it's going to affect the next scan. Yeah. And it's not anything you did per se. It's yeah. just they figured out how to get around what's in place today. Exactly. And that becomes a harder, a harder. That's a to really key thing to help people understand. Right. I like that. And and then the, you know, there's a lot of people out there saying, but I, but I don't even maintain my own server. Okay. Right. Right. Well, that means you don't have to supply the scan, but. Uh, whatever service provider that you have that is maintaining your server with your website on it that hosts the iframe that drops in. And f some people don't know any of these words and some people are saying, oh, that's me. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so There's a lot of those. Uh, yeah, I try, to tell, I try to tell people, hey, if you're in SAQA and someone else is um, hosting and maintaining that server that your website is on, um, you need to not only make sure that they are, um, that they are giving you an SAQ service provider level because that includes the scans right. but also that they're aware of these coming changes and that right. um that they're on top of those things for you service um provider management is really key to merchants even when when you offload anything knowing that they're giving you good uh information and they're they're taking care of you well is really important so i i'll often tell people hey if you have service providers and they're filling out their own SAQD. It's a self-signed, nobody else looked at it. You better have in your risk assessment, your company's annual risk assessment that you've chosen to work with someone that self-assesses and doesn't have somebody double check their work. Because right. these self-assessed service providers are, are potentially the ones, sometimes they're great, but potentially the are the ones that are just checkboxing it and then they're going to lose your information. Yeah, yeah. Right. And then you're going to have to explain a breach when you didn't have any control over it except in the choices you made of service provider. Right. Right. No, and it, it's it's hard because you you will get we have partners that'll call up and go, "Hey, this merchant is an SAQD and they got compliant in 35 minutes." How how did that happen? You know. They're really good. <laughs> fired. <laughs> they are fired. Right. right. And and you know Yes, merchants to talk yeah. to other merchants. Yes. Merchants talk to their sales reps. Yeah, sales do. reps will say, all you got to do is say yes, and you're done, <laughs> right? Um, which is a horrible thing to hear. It is. It's not good. It's not right? healthy. It's <laughs> right. It's nice and quick. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's quick is not always best. Yeah. <laughs> right. Especially yeah. in BCI. So you have to worry about that kind of thing yeah. going on. You really hope that they take it seriously. The yes. self-assessment questionnaire, I wish they would have named it a self-audit. Because the yeah. word audit sounds it's, important. Do you know, when people are not taking me seriously, I call myself an auditor. <laughs> and you're right. There's a reason I do it. Right. Because the people's mindsets are different. PCI is an assessment because right. we together look at the requirements. We together look at the evidence and decide. And we all find out at the same time if something's a gap or not. Right. You know, so it's, it's a more collaborative approach than typically audits are. But... Um, I'm, I'm guilty of using the audit word on occasion. <laughs> <laughs> well, and you hope, you hope a merchant never falls into that, 
oh no, I've, I'm, yeah. I've got to close my business down. You know, heaven forbid we, we want anybody to go through that because it affects their family and it yeah. affects their children and it affects everything, right? right. We don't want that to happen. No, we don't know? want that worst case scenario of a breach. And sometimes ever. IT people don't get that, mm -hmm. right? I, I, we've had merchants before call and say, well, I went to my IT guy to make him fix this piece and he says it's not broken. And I say, you know, when I take my car into a, a brake place and I got this squeak and I can hear it and they tell me, oh, no, there's not a squeak there. I go to a different brake guy, you know, <laughs> uh, get a second there's opinion. options out there. Get second opinions, find right. the people that are going to help you and get that help because right. there's definitely some kind of a problem. I think it's worth it for the merchants. It's worth it for the ISOs to help their merchants. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's a, it's a vast ecosphere of, of interactions in the payment world. So I really appreciate both of you coming on. And, yeah. Thanks so much. I uh, hope I helped educate. Oh, absolutely. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jim. Hope to talk to you guys again. Yeah. Thanks. Jim. Thanks. Scott. Anytime. Thanks for joining us again here at the Security Metrics Podcast. I really enjoyed our topic today, and I hope you did too. If you found this of value, please share it with your friends, share it with your colleagues. We would love to spread the word on PCI, especially among some of the, the smaller businesses. Take care and talk to you next time. Thanks for watching. To watch more episodes of Security Metrics Podcast, click on the box on the left. If you prefer to listen to this podcast, it's available on all your favorite podcast platforms. See you on the slopes.